Welcome to the Hay House Meditation Podcast. I'm your host, Matteo Pistono. As many of you know, for over 30 years, Hay House has been publishing books and videos and audios that have transformed people's lives and have been a source of healing and wisdom. I'm excited to announce that Hay House has asked me to host the all new Hay House Meditation Podcast to continue bringing you amazing content. I'm honored and humbled. I began my own meditation journey 25 years ago when I was traveling in Asia. I was a sort of a fiery political activist at the time and I encountered a Tibetan meditation master in a cave in the Himalayas and I asked him for advice. I, I said, how best can I make a positive impact in the world? And he said, he said, first learn how to meditate because it's through meditating that you can truly come to know yourself then you'll be able to help others. I thought about that and then that evening I decided there and then that I would learn to meditate. And I've been meditating every day now for about the last 25 years. My studies and practices eventually led me to teachers and monasteries and hermits in Nepal, in Tibet, in India, in Thailand, mainly among Buddhists. And I'd also taken a keen interest to study and practice yoga, and in particular, yogic breathing techniques, which are an amazing support for meditation. Along with that practical training under different meditation masters, I also wanted to study the philosophy behind the traditions, so I went and received my master's degree in Indian philosophy in London, at the University of London. I find combining practice and theory enriches my meditation practice so much. In the last decade or so, I've written a number of books on Buddhist mystics, spiritual activism, and specifically meditation techniques. Um, I continue to be a student of meditation today, applying the methods that I've learned from my teachers. And I'm excited to share these methods and techniques with you on the meditation podcast. So how is this gonna happen? On the podcast each week, we're going to bring you two episodes. The first episode will be a guided meditation, usually around 20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, with a variety of teachers who have their own speciality in meditation and technique. The second episode, I will sit down in conversation with a meditation teacher or author or healer. Some of them will be Hay House authors you know and love, and we'll also have other luminaries on the podcast. And for today's podcast, that luminary is none other than the CEO of Hay House. Um, someone who has worked for decades with Louise Hay, with Wayne Dyer, and so many others. So I'm very happy to welcome Reed Tracy, the CEO of Hay House, on the new and improved Hay House Meditation Podcast. Thank you, Mateo. And look, here's all the books he's written, just so you know. He, he's an expert in meditation. And so he's going to help you a lot along the way here in this um, podcast. So that's the reason why I selected him to be your host and to help you no matter where you are in your meditation practice. So I know some of you are like me and you, you, you're you just getting started and you've only been doing it a little while and it might be up and down and I'm going to tell you my story of, about it, um, my whole experience around meditation. And some of you might be um, further along the journey, but as you heard from Matteo, he's a true expert. So no matter where you are, if you're just starting yesterday or you're starting tomorrow, because this is the first time you've watched anything on meditation, Matteo's your guy to help you. And if you're super experienced, you just heard Matteo's been doing this 25 years. He's been with some of the greatest teachers in the world. So he's going to help you along for definitely for sure. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's your guy. You're going to hear a lot from him. And also what we've done is we're using this podcast, this uh, meditation podcast to help you get started. But we also just released a brand new Hay House Unlimited app that has hundreds of meditations in it that you can access anytime you want. And that app is going to is 
is priced so that you can just do it anytime you want, anywhere you want. We're starting off with a price of $5 a month. So you have access to hundreds of meditations that if you decide you really want to make this a practice and you need a little help with some guided meditations or other things, the app actually has all the Hay House audios ever created in 30 years. Um, it's an amazing so, <laughs> library, amazing repository. Yeah, so you you have access to it. If you want to go deeper, that's available for you. Um, you can go to heyhouseunlimited.com and you can get the access to the app there. You can go to the app store and take a look at it. But if you want to have a whole, even more meditations, we have that for you as well. Um, but I'll start off just telling my experience with meditation, which is, it's, it's probably not the, some of you might relate to this, but hopefully you, most of you do this quicker than I did. So, so I've been working here at Hay House since 1988. So a long time I've been here. Um, I started um, in the accounting department of Hay House. I was the financial director before I even worked at Hay House. Um, I was a CPA and Hay House was one of our clients. And so I um, started working with them even before that. And then I started full time as the financial director, but I didn't know anything about anything. Hey you were House. just dealing with the numbers. You weren't dealing with sort of what what Louise was saying or right, the content. Right, and and like right when I first started at Hay House, they had a mandatory company wide. Um, workshop that everyone had to go to. There's this guy named Tony Robbins, um, and he was teaching people how really? to walk across hot fire, you know, flat, yeah, like hot course. coals. And this is before Tony became famous, before his. Uh, I mean, he was get, getting known, but this is before he wrote a book, before he did his infomercial, which made him really famous. In fact... Was he his, working at Hay House? No, he was just doing workshops, you I know, see. and it was like 30 people at the workshop, and... Um, and they had the hey, everyone at Hay House, but they said, don't invite Reed because he'll probably quit if we bring him <laughs> to this thing. There was too much woo-woo. Yeah, I mean, because I didn't know anything about this. I just knew, like, Louise, like, she taught people that your thoughts create your life. You could heal your life with thinking, which I didn't know, but she really believed it, and she really wanted to help people, and she wasn't doing it really to make money or anything. She just wanted to help people. And so I go like, it seems like we can, I can help her with her business and all that, but I didn't even know if I really believed any of the stuff she was saying. <laughs> and so that was my first exposure. So we, I didn't go to the Tony thing, but they all did. And, and it, it was a workshop that um, like right at that workshop or soon after that workshop is when he got discovered by Guthy Renker and the rest is history we all know Tony now but um, but anyway so I started working at Hay House and Hay House was small back then and um, we had like four books and five tapes that we did like one of the ca cassette tapes cassette tapes before CDs way before CDs yeah. and um, Louise had uh, one of her CDs I mean one of her cassette tapes was a morning and evening meditations um, which I'm sure many of the people listening to this have heard it's of. It's like a classic. Yeah, so yeah. many people say, look, I wake up with Louise and I go, I sleep with Louise every night. Like, she always <laughs> used to love that when people said that. Um, and because they, they did that so often, you know. And any of you listening, if you want to hear it, you can go to the Hay House Unlimited app and you can listen to it. Um, it's free trial, so you can try the whole app for seven days. For I might even say here, Reed, that we're planning on bringing back the uh, morning and evening meditation as a block of guided meditation practices in the app. Uh, sort of taking that legacy of Louise and also Wayne, because Wayne had his yeah. morning and evening. Yeah. So I'm we're going to talk about Wayne's. Yeah. Too, so you know. we'll, we'll we'll have a, a a separate category for those morning and evening meditations. For that's people. awesome because that's so important, and I'll talk a little bit about that, like Wayne's philosophy on that. But anyway, so that was one of the audios, and then. Um, 
Louise had just bet right after I started at Hay House. Louise had just bet on Oprah and Donahue in the same week and everything exploded and the, everyone was buying her book, but as people bought her book, they were wanting to expand and buying the audio tapes. So we were one of the first publishers to ever even have audio tapes. Like, no, not very wow. many people had audio tapes. And there was another person that was on Oprah and Donahue with Louise at the, the exact same time in April of 1988, and that was um, Bernie Siegel. And so, um, Dr. Bernie Siegel, who so was love. also yeah. working with cancer patients and things like that. Um, and so, we did a whole group of meditations with Dr. Bernie Siegel. Those are all in the app, too. But um, that was one of the very first people that we worked with other, mm -hmm. other than Louise. So, we created these audio um, meditations. Like I think now we have like nine of them, but we started with three. Um, and those became really popular because no one had ever even really thought of this that you could use meditation in your cancer treatment and it would help you with the chemo or anything else that you did or help you to heal and Bernie was one of the first people to do that he wrote this book called Love Medicine and Miracles which was a classic and Louise had cancer herself and she had used visualization and meditation as part of her healing as well. Um, but anyway, so a le like a year or two later, we, um, we one of uh, the authors that we started doing live events. And so uh, we would have different famous authors come and speak with Louise at these live events. And... Um, and some of the authors that came were Wayne Dyer and Joan Borisenko was another person that came and she, w um, she had um, studied at Harvard and other places and she was in charge I think of the mind body um, education and things at Harvard right. and um, was seeing how meditation could be beneficial to people and so, like, I went to Boulder, Colorado, where she lived, and audio taped her doing meditations, and including a beginner's guide to meditation, teaching people how to do meditation. So I was kind you of you were sort of learning by osmosis, right? Exactly. That's what it, kind of my whole Hay House journey is. I learn by osmosis. I always say, like, I talk to Wayne Dyer and Louise Hay every day for twenty years, and somehow like people would ask me questions and I was giving answers from them and I didn't even under really realize I was getting it but anyway so I went there I recorded these things but I really like hadn't started try it myself which is so weird like I was just learning about it doing different things and um, and I was and I would say to Louise, like, well, my meditation is like when I take a shower in the morning, <laughs> like I, I kind of relax and I get all these ideas. And she goes, that's not the same. You know, you got to right. like do the like just try to do it. And she would tell me all different times, like I traveled all over the world with her and did all these different things. And at different times, she would say to me, like, oh, you should try it. And like, I might have like listened to the morning and evening meditations but and what was really it was there it. did you have some resistance from trying or I just I don't know I think I was so busy like of course that would have helped me the most then <laughs> but um, and then I just didn't do it and then like with Wayne Dyer um, he w he used to meditate every day and I'd be around him and we and I went and recorded like years later this um, this one of the most famous meditations that we have it's called meditations for manifesting and it's it's the ahs and the ohms yes and so i used to do that like when he did that i did that for a while and and i was there when he recorded the thing and like i think a million people bought that cd it was a cd by then um, and that's like we that's in our Hay House Unlimited app too, but that's helped a lot of people like manifest what they wanted in their lives. And he Wayne used to have at his lectures, he would have people stand up and say, you know, what's your experience with mo meditations for manifesting? And everyone had a thing like I got this, I did this, I brought this into my life. It was amazing. 
Um, but I never did it consistently, so I did it for a little bit, and then I didn't do it, and like, and then... Uh, did you have any uh, feelings of, uh, when you did do it, what was your sort of what was your sort of experience w with it when you were just trying it on your own yeah. in the hotel room in Maui or when yeah. you were traveling around what was your was it a was it a good experience or did you sort of question what was happening yeah I think like I was I didn't really understand it completely but I do the ah uh, like we even like Wayne used to do it at his lectures and we would do it or he would do it with me at his house in Maui and we would do it and it was good experience but I just didn't keep going mm -hmm. so and then, like, about five years ago or six years ago, I was, uh, uh, w we had the new author that I had met, and um, he had actually come on a trip with Wayne Dyer. We did a trip in Europe and um, a CC and different places um, in, in um, France and things like that. He was doing this trip with, like, 300 people, and... One of the people that came on it was a guy named Brendan Burchard. Oh, he really? And so he came just to learn as a student. And so like we, I connected with him on the trip, got to know him a little bit. And then um, like about a year after that, I went up to Portland, Oregon um, to meet him. That's where he lived, him and his wife, Denise, lived up there. And, and had uh, Hay House published him yet? Um, no. At that time? We hadn't published him. Um, so that's a whole nother story, which I'm not going into <laughs> here. But um, and so when we were up there meeting, I was up there for like two or three days. Like we were staying at his, he has like a house outside of town in Oregon on the Columbia River, a really nice place. And we were helping each other with our businesses and talking about different things. But each day he would go, he would say, "Okay, look, I need to go meditate." Like and. It, and no matter what we were doing or whatever, he'd say, okay, I'm going to take my 30 minutes, you know, you can go do whatever, but I'm going to meditate. And I'm like, wow, like, he, mm. you know, like, he does this and he's, and, and I said, wow, maybe I should try this again, you know. So he was kind of my motivation to try it again. And so I came back after that and I started off like with my iPhone, I don't have it here, but I would do the timer thing. And sure. and one of the things that Wayne Dyer used to say when he meditated before he went on stage, he would just, his kind of mantra or whatever was, how may I serve? Like he would always just think of that like when his mind drifted away and started thinking of everything else. He had just come back to how may I serve? So I said, well, if it worked for Wayne, I should do that. So mm -hmm. I would set my iPhone timer for like five minutes to start. Like yeah. I would do five minutes, and it was and it's amazing. Like five minutes is a long time. It can seem like an eternity <laughs> for people. <laughs> like I would hit the five minutes, and I'd be sitting there, and I'd go, you know, try to not think of anything and relax, and then I'd do like when I'd start thinking of everything, I'd go. How how may I serve? And then the five minutes seemed like eternity, and I forget like if I did that for maybe three months or six months, and then I did like ten minutes, and then I did fifteen minutes like six months later, and that, now I do like fifteen to twenty minutes when I do it, and I and I do, always do it a hundred percent of the time when before I write my newsletters, I always do it like. Mm -hmm. For like, it gives me like I don't know inspiration to sure. write them, or um, perhaps it opens this sort of uh, space for your creativity to arise. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I try to do the 20 minutes every day. Now I'm not like you and for sure do it, <laughs> but I do like most days. I would say like five of seven days, I do tw my 20 minutes of meditating and. Um, actually, I haven't really tried so much with the guided meditations. I was thinking with the new app, I would have yeah. an easy way to start doing that. So I'm going to try that more. Yeah. Um, I think some people, you know, with the guided meditations, some people it very much resonates with. People can really get in the flow. They follow the instructions. And it sort of, it, it truly is a guide through a, a kind of journey. Some other people, 
um, I found where they have the instruction and they want to just do it by themselves. They want to sort of retreat in, into their own mind and they're able to sort of almost have that guidance within them, within their mind. Right. And it just, there isn't one better way or the other, you know, it just is, um, it, it, it's just that it just depends upon the disposition of the individual. And that's what's so interesting, I find kind of so rich about Hay House and our authors, is that we have this entire library of knowledge systems, of methodologies, of techniques, uh, for so many different kinds of dispositions of individuals. Yeah. So if you're really into um, affirmations, I mean, we have the queen of affirmations. We have mm -hmm. Louise Hay and all of her lineage all the way down to individuals like Gabby Bernstein today, yeah. right? But if you want somebody like straight up um, a little bit more traditional meditation, maybe they see David G or something like this. But so um, that's what, and that's what we're going to be offering on the podcast is is many different techniques. We're not saying you have to do this one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I know, and I know, like later, like Wayne did his I am meditation thing, and that became popular with the special music with the that music. he had designed for it, was, it with James yeah. Twyman, and um, so. It, that, I mean that's it, it's a great to have a big selection of different things for people and that was something that Hay House it seemingly uh, the history perhaps you could clarify it that brought with, with there was the guided meditations but then there was using soundscape yeah U using the sort of music or even just uh, binaural beats or all of these different ways of using sound to have people enter a space of meditation yeah but we used to do like we uh, and we still have them the subliminal ones too so some people just like they rather not even hear the words and yeah have the music and some people like that and we we did a bunch of different things with that so I think it keeps evolving you know as we get different people with yeah. different expertise and there's so many different ways which you're you know like how many different meditations techniques have you learned over the years? Oh, I mean, literally hundreds. If we count the meditation techniques and also breathing techniques, is yeah. something I'm very interested in is um, this sort of yogic breathing. And it's amazing because with the breath, there's only three things we're really doing. We're breathing in, we're breathing out, and the short places in between. But the number of techniques that you can work with, with just that uh, limited amount of uh, and the effects from it are quite extraordinary. So we're going to bring those on to um, the podcast. Um, traditionally, it's called pranayama, but we'll just call it breath work. Yeah. Different ways to work with the breath because what we do with the breath essentially is we um, utilize the breath to create the perfect container, the body and the mind, for meditation to naturally arise. It's yeah. almost as though you can't help but meditate after just a just a short amount of doing these breathing exercises yeah that's awesome i think it gets you in that right space to totally do it. and yeah. i think the other thing that i've learned and i know a lot of people listening probably is like you don't have to worry that you're not doing it right like i think even with Such all your point. 25 years of doing it sometimes you know you might fall asleep or sometimes oh you absolutely might, you know start thinking of too many things yeah. you know like i think that's the I think that's the biggest thing I've noticed over the years of how many people say like I've tried to meditate but I couldn't do it yeah. right but there I don't think there is a right and wrong way to do it I so. think you're totally correct Reed you know in the meditation manuals in these ancient meditation manuals that I've studied uh, in Tibet um, it will oftentimes say that when a student begins to meditate the first thing that they'll oftentimes say is I can't meditate because I have too many thoughts. Right. But actually, that is a sign that they're meditating because they're beginning to notice what is actually happening within their whole, within, within the uh, landscape of their mind. They're beginning to notice it. And right. that's the very first step is just noticing that things move very quickly in our mind, but we can have some control over it. Right, and that's, I know that, and that reminds me of what I was gonna say about Wayne Dyer, is he always said like, you know, a good time to meditate is in the evening before you go to sleep because then you're going to marinate on it all night long. You know, like Such your subconscious point. mind, if you get a thought in there that's positive and you think about it all night long, 
the chance of it helping you with your life is much better than a negative thought that many of us have That's before so we true. go to sleep or whatever so I thought that was a um, good advice and that's why I'm glad we're doing so many of these morning and evening meditations get your day started with them end your day positively with the with the right mindset as you go to sleep exactly night, so. exactly Reed I want to ask you about um, so with um, I want to come back to Louise and ask you something about Louise so you know with her um, with with her teachings on how to create the sort of right motivation or the right, what we call, what might call mindset. I know yeah. that she didn't use that. And she taught, that was what she was sort of teaching on continually, continually uh, for so many years. How did that impact you? How, how do you bring that into your day? I mean, you have, you're running a huge uh, business that stretches over uh, a, around the world. You're a really busy guy. Yeah. So how does that? How does creating your mindset? What does you know? What does Louise? What Louise taught you? How does that sort of percolate into the work here? Right. Well, I mean, one of the big things she taught is your thoughts create your life. So, like, mm -hmm. if you think positive thoughts, you're gonna have a positive life. If you think negative thoughts, so you always have to, like you're saying, pay attention to what you're thinking. So you can think. Ain't, like Louise used to say is like ain't it awful like you could be like that it's terrible this is bad this is bad you know everything's going bad or you can think of this is the problem now but this is the positive way that we can overcome this problem and right. the things you can do um, like she used to have this thing she says like and I say it all the time like when things aren't going good is like all is well everything will work out for my highest good from this situation only good can come like that's like how simple like she used to have it on a little card as she gave it to people but like that can be it, your it can be that simple to keep your mindset positive yeah. on what you're doing and what you're doing and I like literally I do that all the time like when I notice myself thinking that that's what I think of or like if I'm stressed out at night I'll think of it and and you can see, like, a lot of what Louise taught is simple, but it really works, you know, like... Yeah, I mean, simple, but 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 profound. Yeah. Because it is as though what Louise was teaching us was how to be um, the, not only the actor in our life, but also the director, the playwright, to be, to be completely sort of in charge of our own life. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of it is, and I'm sure you're going to talk about this in the podcast, is like mindfulness of paying attention to your thoughts, right? That's the, right at the very beginning. Yeah. Like, yeah, sometimes uh, we just get overwhelmed by our thoughts. Right, and we're thinking, the like, if you pay attention to what you're thinking, it, like, she, she, a lot of people say this, but Louise used to say it, that you think of 10,000 thoughts a day, mm -hmm. um, and it, a lot of them are the same ones over and over, like, it's this is terrible I'm too fat I'm dumb I'm you know like right. I need to do this I need to do that instead of positive things that you have and exactly. what you want to think instead of these negative things and just changing those like the 10,000 thoughts really you might have a hundred and ninety of them aren't positive then your right. life probably isn't gonna turn out as good as if you make those positive and it's it's similar to like also like esther hicks abraham mm -hmm. like if you the law of attraction like if you keep those positive thoughts if you have the feeling of the positive things happening in your life the chance of you succeeding are much higher because you get an alignment with and you get help or like gabby bernstein says the universe has your back but right. there there's all positive things that can happen in your life you just have to make them happen exactly so. one of the things that uh, I was just reminded of when you were talking about this sort of the frequency of negative thoughts that we have and what that does to the mind and also the frequency of, of positive thinking um, that we're gonna have on the podcast we're gonna bring um, scientists on we've already I've already been speaking to Dawson Church yeah. to Alberto Violdo yeah. and others where they where they talk about the science behind meditation what is actually happening in the brain and in the body yeah. when we're meditating and when we're thinking positive thoughts and when we're thinking negative thoughts and just very briefly they both stress how creating these neural pathways the actual sort of super highways in our brain yeah. that that if we reinforce those 
we can reinforce those with the positivity or with the negativity. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a choice. And, but we can, it, 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 it takes practice and meditation can be one of those practices. Mm -hmm. Also affirmation can be, contemplation, prayer. Mm -hmm. There's many different sort of techniques uh, and we're gonna cover all of those in, in the podcast. Yeah, we're we're awesome. gonna bring real experts in that will talk about how to do it and then and then they will actually guide the practices as well. Yeah, for sure. And I know like another one of our popular authors, Dr. Joe Dispenza, like he has so much, like he's popularizing meditation and its importance. And he does so many brain studies of people like doing his retreats and the change it makes. And I know Dawson actually helped him with that and exactly. does that himself. So that'll be really interesting yeah. to learn of how the meditation affects you. Like you hear, that it's good for you, like I think almost everyone agrees with that, but why is it good exactly. for you? Exactly, what is actually happening? Right. The other thing that we're going to talk about too is what are the sort of supportive things that we can do in our life for our meditation practice? And one of the, one of the principal ones will be our diet, for yeah. example, because if we have a diet, um, if we're just sort of juicing ourselves with uh, sugars, um, in the form of just straight sugar or refined flours, it's very difficult to meditate because those sugars are fueling the, what we call the mammalian brain, uh, that fight or flight, yeah. just that this sort of predatory, uh, I got mine kind of mentality. And it's, it almost is impossible to, to, allow the, to allow the mind to rise into the neocortex, into the, into the higher brain, where love, where compassion, where a sort of steadiness where calm abiding resides. And so we're gonna talk about the importance of eating like a keto diet, something that is um, a very nutritious, nutrient dense um, diets that actually fuel the brain for meditation. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Like we did one of the very first books on the keto diet, Fat for Fuel with Fat Dr. Dr. McCullough. Yeah. Exactly. And we have lots of books on that now. But Yeah, so we're gonna try to take a holistic approach in the podcast, sort of um, uh, giving a nod to our lineage, if you will, to Louise, to Wayne, yeah. to uh, Dr. Bernie Siegel, to all of the these sort of um, um, very wise elders that we have, and then, but also bring in the, what is happening today with um, science and nutrition and the most cutting edge techniques on meditation. That's awesome. Well, I'll be listening <laughs> right along with you, Mateo. Excellent, excellent. If you guys need any help, meditation made easy. Call, uh, coming to know your mind. <laughs> Definitely a great book, and all your books. It's amazing all the knowledge that you've learned over well, all. Well, I gotta, years. I gotta thank you for inviting me to come to uh, to host the podcast. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be really fun, um, and I look forward to interacting with our listeners as well. And we'll we'll provide the uh, the venue for them to send in questions and whatnot. And we'll have episodes where we just answer their specific questions. Yeah, that's awesome. So many people have so many yeah. questions. So that's perfect. Too. So thanks for coming on the. podcast podcast today, Reed. Yep, it was great, Mateo. Awesome. Good luck. All right, thank you. All, All right. right. As we launch this podcast, this week we are offering you a gift of two guided practices, one by me and the second by none other than our beloved Louise Hay. If you're excited about all the upcoming interviews and guided meditation practices, please subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. Until next time, have a good meditation practice.